a creator or director does a vanity project is always a head scratcher. Orson Welles had some, Bird Lancaster, Kirk Douglas. But Clint Eastwood and Bronco Billy, early 1980 release, bizarre, why this movie was ever contemplated. Made the okay money to box office, but from what he would do from a Western and war movies and thrillers, it made no sense. Now, this American Western comedy drama starred Eastwood and his paramour, Sandra Locke. It was directed by Eastwood and written by Dennis Hackett. In this movie, Bronco Billy McCoy is a stuntman performing in front of a meager crowd at Bronco Billy's Wild West show, a rundown traveling circus reminiscent of Buffalo Bill's Wild West, of which he's the owner and operator. For the show's finale, a blindfolded Bronco Billy shoots balloons around a female assistant on a revolving wooden disc, and for the last balloon, he throws a knife. However, his assistant moves her own leg and is cut, which spurs her to quit. Due to low ticket sales, Billy has been able to pay his employees for six months. Plot hole galore in that. The show moves on to a new town, and Bronco Billy goes to City Hall to get a permit. He bumps into Antoinette Lilly and John Arrington, who are there to be married. Antoinette despises her future husband, but has to marry before she's 30 in order to inherit a large fortune. Their car breaks down at the motel opposite the Wild West show. The next morning, Arlington steals all her money and their repaired car. She's left her fend for herself and asks Billy McCoy for help. Now, Bronco Billy takes Antoinette to become his new assistant, Miss Lilly, though she only agrees to do one show. Her first performance is unusually successful, although Miss Lilly irritates Billy by not sticking to the script. Now, Antoinette discovers that Arlington has been arrested for her murder, uh, framed by Antoinette's stepdaughter and her scheming lawyer friend, who stand to gain her inheritance. Seizing the chance to get even to Arlington, Antoinette rejoins the Wild West show. Now, Antoinette learns that none of Billy's performance are actually cowboys. Billy's crew are largely ex-convicts, alcoholics, or both. Bronco Billy was a shoe salesman from New Jersey who shot his wife for sleeping with his best friend. Nevertheless, Miss Lily begins to warm to the troop. Now, two of the show's performers announce they are going to have a baby. The crew goes to a bar to celebrate. One gets arrested by police who discover that he is a deserter from the army. Now, this is 1980 there. Bronco Billy uses the show's meager savings to bribe the sheriff into letting the man go, swallowing his pride and enduring the sheriff's verbal humiliations for his friend's sake. Now, one night, the circus tent burns down. Everyone blames Miss Lily for their bad luck, but Bronco Billy defends her and proposes that he rob a train. He tried to do this in a standard Western way, riding alongside and jumping on, but a modern train proves to be resistant to such an approach, and he gave up. Now, next, the troop travels to a mental institution at which they had previously performed pro bono. The head of the institution, who is obsessed with the Wild West, agrees to provide them with accommodation and to supply a new tent with the inmates helping to sew one of the American flags. Miss Lily and Bronco Billy spend the night together. By chance, one inmate turns out to be Arlington, who had been paid by a crooked lawyer to confess to being mentally disturbed when he murdered Antoinette. When he sees her, he raises a fuss and gets released. Bronco Billy and the show depart without Miss Lily. Now, Antoinette returns to a luxurious lifestyle, but she is bored of Mrs. Billy, who drowns his loneliness with alcohol. When Bronco Billy is about to introduce Lefty as his assistant, Miss Lily appears. The show, now a raving success, runs smoothly, and Bronco Billy ends it with a positive message for the children in the audience. Bizarre. So, besides this, uh, your normal uh, Eastwood participants, you got Jeffrey Lewis, Scat Band Carters, Billy McKinney, uh, Beverly McKenzie, actually. The soap opera store uh, shows up, and Doug McGrath as well. Now, Eastward received Dennis E. Hackens and Neil Dabrowski script and decided to join the film with Sandra Locke. The film was shot in two months in the Boise, Idaho era in the fall of 79. Additional filming took place in eastern Oregon and New York State. It was filmed on a low budget of $5 million and it finished two to four weeks ahead of schedule. The soundtrack, which was headlined by Merle Haggard and Raleigh, Ronnie Middlesap, also featured singing by Eastwood himself. Uh, now, Eastwood has cited Bronco Billy as being his one of the most affable shoes of his career, and biographer Richard Schenkel has argued that the character Bronco Billy is his most self-reverential work. The film was a modest commercial hit, but it was appreciated by critics. Janet Mays of the New York Times believed the film was the best and funniest Clean Eastwood movie in quite a while, praising Eastwood's directing in a way he uh, intricately juxtaposed the old West and the new.
So the idea of Clean Eastwood as a kind of, well, an old West circus performer with a sense of humor kind of freaked out a lot of people. The Golden Raspberry Awards, the first ever, uh, nominated Sandra Locke as worst actress, but she's so bad at everything she does. Early part of her career, she was fine, but obviously she, she's not the greatest uh, nut on the tree, as we like to say. Now, although the film grows four to five times its cost, some $25 million, during its U.S. theatrical release, Eastwood considered it insufficient. In a French interview, Eastwood spoke up the film's financial reception. It was an old-fashioned theme, probably too old-fashioned since the film didn't do as well as we hoped. But if, as a film director, I ever wanted to say something, you'll find it in Bronco Billy. I'm glad that Clint Eastwood was proud of it, but again, I found it kind of tedious. And you know, all uh, you know, if uh, people like that type of movies, but I me, mean, Clint Eastwood, not killing somebody or not fighting on the side of good, it kind of you know, it's not a Clint Eastwood movie. It's almost like he played Clint Eastwood playing Clint Eastwood. You know what I'm saying? So, ladies and gentlemen, that's the interesting case of Bronco Billy from 1980. If you like what you're doing here, give us a like, comment, subscribe, or share. Bye.